Hi, I'm Martin Ramju, editor of LCT Magazine. As part of our ongoing educational series with operators, I'm here with Paul Walsh, Superior Executive Transportation, in my home stomping grounds of Southeast Virginia. Paul, welcome. Thank you, Martin. So one of the big subjects uh, is distinguishing ourselves through good customer service. And small fleet operators are still very much the backbone of the industry, uh, more than 60%. Um, have fleets of 10 vehicles or less. What are some of the approaches that you take to set yourself apart? Well, number one, I think that we have to realize that this is a service industry. Mm -hmm. um, from answering the phone 24 hours a day to uh, being able to respond to people when they have requests, obviously now our big challenge is becoming more on-demand type, not really you know, instant, um, but the bigger companies that feed us a lot of work are expecting us to be able to respond rather quickly. Mm -hmm. So we have to be at a very high level all the time. And, um, you know, that is a challenge, I think, in any business to, you know, always make sure that the chauffeurs are, are ready to go. And um, in this environment now, with, with the way that um, work is, I think that that challenge of having the transition from, you know, having reservations two weeks in advance to maybe a day in advance or a couple hours uh, can be a real challenge to get the reservations in, find out which chauffeurs are available, um, the particular vehicles with a small fleet. I'm not that uh, worried about the vehicles because I can only do so much, obviously. But we need to be able to you know, have the vehicles cleaned um, and ready to go. So keeping the fleet up, um, just the you know, constant barrage of emails and phone calls and knowing when, when it's time to go, we got to be ready to go. And like you said, I think that the backbone of the industry are the smaller companies because the large companies that we're fortunate uh, to be able to work with need us. Mm -hmm. and we need to be at that level, whether they're in Chicago or New York or D.C., in, in our small towns, we have to provide the exact same level of service that people expect when they're in those markets. You have an example of a customer service situation where you had to go over the top or you got some kind of a big request? Um, I probably have a, a couple that I could think of, but I have an upcoming one, which is, is going to be a real challenge. Mm -hmm. And um, we're expecting a large festival to happen um, in Virginia Beach where I handle other people's clients, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's going to be a very very a big movement of people, and I have to be very aware of the clients that they're going to be in the back of the cars, not being my passengers or somebody else's. So the chauffeurs, you know, have to be relaxed and and attuned to the fact that you know they may have stars in the back, but we've got a job to do, and. There are going to be challenges with traffic, with, you know, obviously um, higher value clients that are going to expect a level of service that they would if they were in Hollywood or mm -hmm. Miami. So, you know, getting ready for that, I'm, I'm already starting to get nervous because we're going to have to have a lot of people in place. We're going to have to have routes in place and backup vehicles ready to go. So um, I've contacted the uh, two major affiliates that we already know about and gave them a little heads up that you know this is going to be bigger than anything we've ever done before. Mm -hmm. um, we have had some some big events at the beach or in Norfolk that I've had all my vehicles participate in but this is going to be a lot of moving parts and I think that uh, you know the years of experience and working with other great operators has put me in a position where I can call anybody in the whole country and say, what would you do? Mm -hmm. And they'll tell me. You know, that's what we were just talking about how I think the industry is so helpful with each other because we want to succeed at a very high level. And in order for that to happen, um, the big experienced operators that do rely on us are willing to help. You know, what do you need? Do we, do we need to send a coordinator to help you, you know, figure out what the routes are or you know can we send vehicles you know how many other industries are going to be that helpful and I don't think very many would be mm -hmm. so 
we're looking forward to it. Um, I think that as a small operator, obviously the pressure is going to be there, but if it's successful, you know, it'll just move us on to bigger and better things. Mm -hmm. Now, I know one of the uh, things you draw upon in your operations is you have chauffeurs who are former members of the military, yes. law enforcement. Mm -hmm. What um, are some of the advantages of having chauffeurs like that, and how do they enhance your, your customer service? Well, fortunately, um, we're in a big military town, mm -hmm. so I think that um, we're very aware that hundreds of people are retiring every day at a young age from the military, and in my mind, they're available. I'm a veteran, so it's, it is a veteran-owned business. It's not a certified veteran-owned business I'm by no, any means. Um, but I also understand that being a good chauffeur with a customer service to me, there's a lot of military bearing associated with that, so I look at that. Um, as far as the police officers go, um, I was very fortunate early on to um, meet a couple of uh, retired police officers that were interested in the business just because of the fact that you know we weren't in the limousine business, we were in the executive car business, so it wasn't parties on Friday and Saturday nights, it was mm -hmm. uh, you know very high level executive business. So I got very involved with being around the police officers and, and on their bulletin boards, the retirement bulletin boards, when they're all talking, wondering what they're going to do. And obviously there's a lot of military around, and we get to see them quite often. So I have uh, a good relationship with uh, a couple of the different, uh, I can't remember what they, they call them, but they're groups of uh, people to try and get transitioning military into the next job. and. Uh, they're, they're ready, willing, and able to talk to us because obviously people want to do something and I think that in our business it's a great part-time job. I'm not going to guarantee anybody a 40-hour 40, 40 week. Um, if they enjoy retirement and they want to play golf every Wednesday, that's fine by me. I can afford to work around a schedule like that. As a matter of fact, I encourage uh, people that come to work for me that first of all know that this is a part-time job. And if you tell me in advance that you know you have you're going to take care of the grandkids on Thursdays or you have bowling on Friday nights with the guys, I understand. We can work a schedule around that, and you know as long as you tell me in advance, that's what I want because mm -hmm. I don't want anybody committed to you know thinking that they're going to get a call from me um, and you know you got a 40-hour week and I expect you to be. I'd like to get to that position one day. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I tell a lot of people it's the perfect part-time job for those that are looking for the perfect job. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those people stay with me, police mm -hmm. officers and retired military. So, Well, good. Uh, switching gears here, uh, what are some of the things that brings you to these LCT shows? What are some of the benefits you get out of them? Well, I think the number one thing is meeting fantastic people in the industry. Um, we were talking a little bit about me coming out of my shell to be able to walk around and, and meet people. It was a very difficult thing for me when I started uh, to be able to walk up somebody and, and introduce myself and exchange business cards. But the industry as a whole is very welcoming and people want to meet you and if you're doing mm -hmm. a good job and people hear about you they want to introduce you and that makes it a lot easier. So the networking is probably the, the main thing. Education is second to none. I think every show I take away something that makes my company better, it makes me better. Um, obviously the vehicles, you know, it's an amazing array of every type of vehicle that we mm -hmm. in the industry use. It makes me think about, you know, where I want to go with my business. Um, I've set out when I started to be just me and my sedan and that's what I thought it was going to be. And now we're up to three sedans, two SUVs, and a and a 12-passenger executive uh, van. But when I come and I see where the trends are going in the industry, and I have to really think about, you know, what are going to be my next steps. Mm -hmm. And there are people here that are willing to talk financials, talk about DOT, you know, all the things that affect us as we grow and change in our business or. You know, if I decide, you know, I want to stay on the executive side, um, you know, the people are here that, that understand that's the route that I want to go. So the, the shows, there's just so much information uh, that you can glean from 
just being here. And I think that, you know, I come with a, a small plan of which sessions I want to attend, which are important to me. Uh, technology, obviously, um, changing the industry mm -hmm. in a big way. I'm not a, a tech person at all, so listening to other operators explain it at a level that that I can understand is a great thing. And, and then, you know, at the end of the day, get together with everybody and relax and, um, you know, trade war stories. So it's, it's, it's a fun time, educational time, but I think most importantly, there's a lot of business that's done here and you just you take away what you need to take away. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Very good. Thanks a lot, Paul, Thank for you. joining us. Mm -hmm. See you next Thank you. time.